Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you today? Thank you very much for coming to join me and uh, a, a very special welcome for anybody who's new. Uh, yeah, I've had, had quite a few new subscribers recently. It's, it's really nice to welcome you along to this little community here and in, in my craft room usually. And uh, in case you don't know, I live in Durham in the northeast of England and I am part-time a piano teacher working from home and the rest of the time I'm mostly doing all kinds of creative things including making videos for YouTube. And ever since I uh, started my YouTube channel I've, I've made a conscious effort not to really um, focus on subscriber numbers um, uh, I, I didn't start a channel to try and grow into a big channel and make any money or anything like that. I just I just thought it would be lovely to be part of the community on YouTube and a small community was quite okay to me and uh, and it is really great. You know, I, I exchange comments with with lots of you and um, but yes, one or two of you did tell me, point out that I had gone over 4,000 subscribers recently, which is quite amazing. <laughs> I don't quite know how that's happened, but there we go. Um, that, that's what it is. But I, I don't really want to make a song and dance about it. It's just uh, it is just really lovely if you have joined me. And, and especially if you do watch regularly or fairly regularly, uh, we can't, uh, the, there's lots of... Uh, podcasters that I watch who I only watch occasionally because there just aren't enough hours in the day but um, it, it is nice to know that some of you just come back every week and and join me spend a bit of time listening to my chatter and today's podcast is just a little bit of a craft catch-up and a mouse along update and a little bit of music at the end so I'm just going to be talking about the three projects that I've been working on recently or since I last chatted to you about making things. Uh, they're actually the things that I took away in the camper van trip recently and uh, there's one knitting project, one crochet project and a sewing project. So I took all those three things away with me. Uh, the knitting project, if you've been here a few times before, you'll not be surprised to know that it is just a pair of socks. In here and it's just the usual very plain pattern that I knit it was the very first sock pattern that I ever knitted uh, King Cole socks again it's called I don't know if it's still available if it is I'll link it in the description box but it came with the ball of wool it came with a free pattern and and I've uh, I've never used any other plain pattern so it just starts with the cuff works its way down to the toe I've no idea what the kind of heel it is or what the toe is the, the, <clears throat> the way of doing the toe is but it works and I know it off by heart and it's just my completely relaxing kind of project to do but there's nothing plain about the yarn I bought this yarn oh before last Christmas and um it is absolutely gorgeous. I bought it from Attic Spin Dye and it's one of their zebra yarns and it's it's their pastel coloured one and as you can see I have finished one sock, hooray! <laughs> and these are going to be for my sister actually and honestly it's the softest, oh it's just gorgeous yarn this is. It's a merino and nylon blend so they're super washed, so good for socks. Put them in the washing machine but beautifully soft so I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, using that and watching the stripes uh, come through all by themselves uh, really lovely so I have I've done that and I've just uh, started on the uh, the next pair you can just just about see I've done the cuff and it's just started on the leg but uh, yes so that's the socks the crochet project that I took away with me was a new blanket that I'd started called the Little Squares Blanket and for, it was a pattern that I paid for uh, but basically you do make strips of the blanket and then 
gradually you sew the strips together and, and it becomes a little network of little coloured squares in a, in a plain background. Um, so I did my first um, strip, finished that. I think I've got 14 squares and started on the second second strip and then I started to feel mm, less happy with the pattern shall we say I've got a few issues with it so uh, firstly um, I'm using double knitting yarn and a four millimeter hook and I've tried to choose scraps of yarn that look like the same thickness of double knitting because not all double knitting is the same thickness but you can already tell that some of the squares are slightly smaller and some are slightly bigger so maybe the first thing is that it perhaps it's not such a good project for using any old scraps of uh, double knitting perhaps I should have stuck to Stylecraft Special DK F for my background cream colour um, I'm using the uh, Stylecraft Bellissima in cream that I used for the, my all cream coloured blanket because uh, I had quite a bit of it left, quite a bit of the yarn left and uh, so, so that's fine. Um, so that was my first kind of, oh, I'm not sure about this uh, uh, and then uh, so when I started on my uh, second strip of squares then it, it was a bit of a pain because I want to have the colours randomly dotted around. Every time I wanted to join in a new colour uh, I had to um, lie out my first strip and lie out the strip that I was doing and match them up to make sure I wasn't going to have two colours the same next to each other. So that just felt a bit of a faff really. I mean it's not the end of the world is it but it just felt a faff especially in the camper van when it's not so easy to lay things out. Uh, anyway, I, so I kept going with that and but after a while I thought well maybe it would be good if I started sewing the strips together uh, as I go along or after I've done a few squares I'll sew them together which is what I've done uh, so you can see it here um, but in the pattern it suggests using mattress stitch to sew the strips together and so I started doing that but you get really quite a well the way I do mattress stitch you get quite a ridge on the other side and I didn't like that so I took that out and started again and th and this time I used just a whip stitch I held my two strips flat and then and just did a whip stitch to join uh, the this long edge of cream onto the first or whichever was my first um, uh, strip of squares and, and that's fine and it looks the same on both sides so so that I found that solution but I am finding that because some of the squares are slightly smaller or slightly larger that they're not quite lining up so hmm, I'm not sure whether to continue with that or not uh, I'll see uh, yeah anyway um, so that was my crochet project yeah so on my sewing project that I took away with me was a kit to make a mouse so this was my my contribution to joining in with my mouse along uh, I bought a kit from Cool Crafting um, a pattern by Susan Peel who is the designer of the very famous Luna Lapin rabbity hair which I've never made before I've never made any of those before I haven't really made a felt animal like this ever before so it was a bit new to me and um, I'm not always very good at using sewing patterns I just oh, I'm not very experienced at using sewing patterns and when I come to use them I'm not really all that good I, I don't think I don't have a very good spatial awareness you know when you have to think about what things are like when you turn them round and upside down and things I get easily confused by that anyway I did manage to finish the mouse now I took the kit away with me in the camper van and I didn't take any stuffing on purpose and thought I'll just do all of the sewing first and and then I'll start the stuffing when I get home and finish it off at home um, that was me trying to save a bit of space in the camper van <laughs> so I got on with all the sewing and, uh, I, and I had a few issues along the way I made a few mistakes yes 
first mistake I made. Uh, oh, let, let's just introduce you to to my little mouse here. She is. You can see that I did actually get to have a whole mouse. <laughs> but the first issue was that I sewed the ear on back to front. The first ear that I did, uh, I sewed it on back to front. And, and that was me not understanding the pattern. There was nothing wrong with the instructions at all. It's just that I am not very good at following instructions. So I had to take that out and turn it around the other way. And then I did get the other ear on <clears throat> the right direction. So that I solved that little problem. Uh, the next thing was that I was doing sewing up the legs, which are two seams, front and a back seam. And totally because I didn't read the instructions properly, um, I just sewed up both seams, the whole full length. And then the next instruction was to add the foot pad. And to do that, you were supposed to turn the leg inside out and um, stitch around with a seam allowance, stitch your foot pad on and then turn it back. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to be able to turn that leg inside out. It was so thin. And um, I mean, I know there's ways of turning thing, thin things inside out, but because it's felt uh, and I'd already had, oh, yeah, I'd already had other problems of me possibly stitching too close to the edge and then the felt uh, coming away a bit. Um, I didn't want it all to come away. So I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll do my own thing here. Uh, so I turned the felt edge under and the um, and the edge of the Liberty fabric here for the foot pad uh, under and then just overstitched around. And that did result in the feet being two different shapes. The soles of the feet are not identical, but I mean, who has two identical feet? We don't, do we? So, and nobody will really notice. Um, uh, so yeah, so that was the legs. Um, and yeah, so actually when I went back to the instructions, uh, I realized that you on the legs, you're supposed to sew up all of one seam, but then only part way up on the second seam of the leg. Then you put the foot pad in, in then you start stuffing and then you sew up as you go, which is much easier and very sensible. And so, yeah, that's just me. So I think that was all that I did while I was away. I did the tail as well, which uh, has ended up with a curl. Um, you're supposed to stitch it in a way and pull it so that it ended up with a curl. It's got a little curl in it. I was quite pleased with that. And, and then I did the rest of the assembling when I got home. So I did, did all the stuffing and I didn't, I didn't have any problems with that. It was, that was okay. Um, there was two options for sewing the arms on. I think maybe the very first patterns uh, by Sarah Peel, you put a button at the top outside part of the arm and then stitched all the way through from one arm to the next and that meant that the um, arms could actually move a little bit but in the instructions it also said you could just sew around the top of the arm um, and and, th and that's fine I decided to do that she uh, Sarah Peel said in the pattern that's her preferred way now so I thought well if, it, if that's good enough for her I'll just do that as well so yeah so there we go um, I did then buy a knitting pattern to make my mouse a, um, a jumper because I thought she would like a jumper and then I thought I'd try and make her a skirt uh, but the jumper is far too big you can see the jumper here far too wide for her uh, and it is so it is one of the lunar lapping um, uh, patterns so and, and I think all of the clothes are, fit all of the different animals that there are uh, but this one obviously although it said it was for double knitting yarn maybe this is a knit I didn't knit a test thing first so um, perhaps it's thickish double knitting or maybe I needed to go down a needle size or two it will definitely do for one of my other toys but I'm a bit sad because I haven't got any more of this colour of this particular yarn which I just thought she would look lovely in this colour but 
Never mind. I don't even know what kind of yarn it is. It's just a bit of leftover from something. Anyway, some other toy will benefit from that jumper. Uh, so, yeah, so I've yet to make her some clothes. But she says she would like something in pink. Um, although the pattern is called Wilhelmina Woodmouse. Uh, my mouse said that her name is Rose because her favourite colour is pink and because she loves being out in the garden when the scent of roses is in the air. So she would like to have a pinkish outfit. Uh, so I'll see what I can do. Um, I, I'm thinking that I might buy one of the Lunar Lapping books with clothes patterns in and have a go at doing one of those. Or I might just do my own thing. So there we go. And with all that talk of mice, I think we need a little bit of an update of the mouse along. And I, I'm just, I can't tell you how delighted I am at all the photos that have been coming my way of all different kinds of mice, uh, made in all different sorts of ways, um, crafty ones and arty ones. And oh, it's just going to be brilliant. Well, I'm going to have a brilliant parade of mice to show you after the end of June. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't made a mouse yet and you would like to, you've still got time. It's 30th of June 2024 uh, is the closing date. And I mean, and if you haven't quite finished, if like me, you've made one and you haven't done the clothes or whatever, or you've just got part of it done, just send me a photo. It's OK. You can still enter. I know. I know what happens sometimes. We have loads of other things on the go. Uh, yeah, so... Um, and yeah, so I, I thought today I'd just give you a little sneak preview of some of the mouse making that's been going on. And I thought I would focus on all the lovely YouTubers who have been very kindly chatting about the mouse along, spreading the word and joining in themselves with a whole range of mouse patterns. Uh, so I'm just going to show you some of those. And if you are a podcaster and I haven't included you. It's not intentional. Just let me know and I'll put that right um, next time. <laughs> so firstly, a lovely Pamela of Ginger Cat Crochet. She's been making mice. She, I think she's made three altogether, but she very usefully shared her thoughts on the pattern for one of the mice that she made uh, because uh, it, it, she said it wasn't the nicest pattern to follow, even though the mouse itself turned out beautifully and I find it really helpful to get some feedback on how easy or hard patterns are to follow. Jeanette of Crafty Clegg Creations, she's been taking us through the process of making her mice. I think she's made three so far as well. Three beautiful mice. So that's really lovely. Lindsay of So Sweet Samuel, oh she made me laugh because the first felt mouse that she made was mouse snapped by her mom such a funny video to watch called Mouse Snapper on the Loose uh, and I recommend you watch that if you haven't seen it. It's just really funny. I was thoroughly entertained by Anita's little stories, uh, Anita on Gaga Knits, uh, about the little felt mice that she's been making. She, she made a, a mum and a dad and then they got married and then, well, I, I'll not tell you more. You can go to uh, her podcasts and She's, she's done little stories about them at the end, or on the end of about three, I think. I'll try and make sure I link them in the in the description box. Um, Lily from Lily and the Bee has chatted about the mice that she's been making. Uh, she's made, she's sewn two absolutely beautiful mice, and I especially love the little um, patchwork dress that uh, she made for her mouse, for her first mouse and uh, made a gorgeous second little mouse as well. 
Um, thanks also to Cassandra from Craftably Ever After. She chatted about her mouse that she crocheted and Mary from the Slow Crochet podcast. She joined in by making a lovely little crochet mouse called Duncan. And he has a little bag with a, an old penny in it. And there's a little backstory to Duncan, which I might be able to tell you another time. I think it's over on Instagram. I also loved uh, a new to me podcast uh, called Shadows at Midnight, uh, where Kaylee was showing the collection of mice that she already has in her home. And then went through her thought processes about choosing a mouse pattern for the make along. And I thoroughly recommend that you watch one of her, one of her other videos. Uh, it's less than six minutes long, but it's of her two small children who sewing felt mouse finger puppets. Their concentration and skill is absolutely incredible. And you must watch it right to the very end to see them playing with their finished mice. Oh, I, I really enjoyed that. I loved hearing all about Tammy's little diva mouse on her channel, Tammy and Tiara's. Uh, Tammy went right out of her comfort zone to make this little mouse because she doesn't normally make such small things. Um, and her mouse really does like a little diva with a tiara and feather boa. It's also been great to follow Penny of Penelope's Chinwag. And she showed us how she turned a Brambley Hedge book illustration into a most beautiful embroidery um, and she's turned that into a square that she can hang up and just after I recorded last week's uh, podcast I had the most wonderful surprise thanks to Penny and her uh, and her podcast uh, because um, her lovely friend Heather who has also joined in with the mouse along had written the most amazing poem about me and the mouse along Oh, I know some of you have seen it because you've commented to me how wonderful it is. But if you haven't, then go to episode 114 of Penelope's Chinwag and listen to the poem. It's fantastic. You'll also see how um, Penny was just uh, finishing off her uh, mouse embroidery as well on there. Anyway, I'll, I'll link all of the podcasts that I've mentioned uh and in the description box below if you want to go and take a look at, at what, what all these lovely people have been up to. And, oh, I, you know, I, I just can't wait to show you all of the mice that everybody's been making. And I will, after the end of June, I'll be having a prize draw as well. There's quite a number of prizes uh, that I've been gathering. Um, uh, some have been donated. So Jeanette from Crafty Club Creations has um, donated the most beautiful project bag and Angela and Andy from Attic Spin Dye that they've donated a, um, a prize that I can give away um, and I've got a few things of my own that I've been sort of gathering I've got a little ceramic mouse that I bought in uh, Orkney when I was away in Orkney and there's a couple of felt mouse kits that are going to be prizes um, oh a few things actually are. I thought it was would be nice to have a few small prizes and then quite a few people can benefit. But, you know, it's not about winning a prize really, is it? It's just about being a little community of people enthusiastically making things um, and we're all making it on the same theme. So that'll be great. And I decided that when I show this great parade of mice, I uh, will want I decided I wanted a special piece of music. So I have composed a piece of music uh, and I'm tempted to say that I'm not a proper composer, which would be wrong of me to say that. I am, I, I do compose things, so I'm a composer. I'm not a composer of complicated things, okay? <laughs> My influence really is folk music. And if you know anything at all about folk music, you'll know it's got fairly basic harmonies most of the time and a, a fairly defined style. But I'm going to give you a little preview of my piece of music, which is called The Mice Come Out to Play. So I'm going to play that for you in a little while. Uh, I've also been busy recording some more things on the piano. Uh, when I was in Orkney, I bought a book of traditional Orkney tunes 
So I want to use some of that music when I make my videos about the camper van trip. It'll be, it'll be in several parts, I have to say, because we did so much. Um, so I've been busy recording those and I actually composed um, a tune as well called Sailing to Orkney. So I'm going to give you a little sneak preview of those uh, folky tunes and then the mice come out to play, out to play. And then I'll pop back to say goodbye.
that's it for this week. Um, I shall wish you happy mouse making if you're still making mice, but otherwise just take great care of yourself, do lots of things that you enjoy doing and I will be back again very soon. Okay then, bye!